Today I'm going to tell you about red tide. Red tide is a common name for a worldwide phenomenon known as an algae bloom. Large concentrations of aquatic microorganisms, protozoans or unicellular algae, when it is caused by species of dinoflagellates and other organisms. Red tides occur naturally off coast all over the world. Not all red tides have toxins or are harmful. Where red tides occur, dead fish wash up on shore for up to two weeks after a red tide has been through the area. In addition to killing fish, the toxic algae contaminates shellfish. Clams, mollusks, and oysters tend to be, not be susceptible to the toxin and actually store it in their fatty tissue. Shellfish consume the organisms responsible for red tide and concentrate saxitoxin produced from these organisms in their tissues. Saxitoxin blocks sodium channels and ingestion can cause paralysis within 30 minutes. Humans are affected by the red tide species by ingesting illegally harvested shellfish, breathing in aerosolized breathotoxins or phytodiscus toxins, and in some cases, skin contact. The brevitoxins bind to voltage-gated sodium channels, an important structure of cell membranes, Binding results in persistent activation of nerve cells, which interferes with neural transmissions leading to health problems. These toxins are created within the unicellular organisms or as a metabolic product. Red tides contain dense concentrations of organisms and appear as discolored water, often reddish-brown in color. It is a natural phenomenon, but the exact cause or combination of factors that result in a red tide outbreak are not necessarily known. However, it has been said that three key factors play an important role in bloom. These factors are salinity, temperature, and wind. Toxins released by the blooms can kill marine animals including dolphins, sea turtles, birds, and manatees, just to name a few. Marine dinoflagellates produce ichthyotoxins. Fish such as Atlantic heron, American pollock, winter flounder, Atlantic salmon and cod were dosed orally with these toxins in an experiment. Within minutes of receiving doses of the toxin, fish started to exhibit a loss of equilibrium and began to swim in irregular jerking patterns, followed by paralysis and shallow arrhythmic breathing and eventually death after about an hour. Scientists concluded that the toxic red tide had negative effects on fish that were exposed to it. In most cases, like in the U.S., the seafood consumed by humans is tested regularly for toxins by the USDA to ensure safe consumption. However, illegal harvesting of shellfish can cause paralytic shellfish poisoning and neurotoxic shellfish poisoning in humans. Some symptoms include drowsiness, diarrhea, nausea, loss of motor control, tingling, numbing, or aching of extremities, incoherence, and respiratory paralysis, just to name a few. Lastly, reports of skin irritation after swimming in the ocean during a red tide are common so locals and tourists try to avoid the red tide when it is in their area. Florida had an algae problem in June through August of 2018, and it was big. June through August of 2018, an overgrowth in the waters off the state's southwestern coast is killing wildlife and making some beaches noxious. The toxic algae bloom known as red tide is not unusual. They appear off the state's coast almost every year, but this one, still going strong after roughly nine months, is the longest since 2006 when blooms that originated in 2004 finally abated after 17 months. The blooms can poison marine animals like sea turtles and manatees, while waves and ocean spray can carry toxins into the air, causing respiratory problems in people. A dead whale shark that recently washed up on a beach on Sanibel Island in Florida was likely killed by the current red tide. Wildlife officials said the bloom occurs when colonies of algae, simple plants that live in the sea and fresh water, grew out of control while producing toxic or harmful effects on people. Fish, shellfish, marine animals, and birds, according to the National Ocean Service. The National Weather Service issued a beach hazard statement from coastal Charlotte and Lee counties due to red tide in June through August of 2018. Thousands of dead fish are littering the beaches, back bays, and canals in southwest Florida due to the red tide blooms. Residents and visitors are frustrated with the quality of beaches and are reaching out across social media to share concerns about their health and their property. 
Fort Myers Beach Mayor Tracy Gore wants to redirect beach traffic. Fort Myers Beach put up signs along beach entrances urging the public to go to their community pools instead. The occurrences of red tides in some locations appears to be entirely natural. Algae blooms are a seasonal occurrence resulting from coastal upwelling, a natural result of the movement of certain ocean currents. While in others, they appear to be a result of increased nutrients loading from human activities. The growth of marine phytoplankton is generally limited by the availability of nitrates and phosphates, which can be abundant in agricultural runoff, as well as coastal upwelling zones. Coastal water pollution produced by humans and systematic increase in seawater temperatures have been implicated as contributing factors in red tides. Other factors such as iron-rich dust influx from large desert areas such as the Saharan Desert are thought to play a major role in causing red tides. Thanks for watching this adventurous kids episode.